Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to your economics class and today the topic which we have brought before you is about cost. What do we mean by cost? This word is commonly and very frequently can be seen in your books and you must be hearing from, from any source around you. The cost, what do we mean by it and what should we understand about it? Now, dear students, I like to give you one very basic concept of cost today. What is cost itself and why we call it cost? And the very first thing which you need to know about cost is that anything which goes off from hand, Anything which goes out from your hand is your cost. Anything which goes out from your hand. Now, if I just keep on giving some examples, you would barely try to accept what I'm trying to say. For example, the very first cost which you learn in economics in your earlier days of uh, uh, O-levels, you must have heard the word opportunity cost now what does this word actually explains that if you have two choices the one which you pick is your selection that is your economic choice and the other one which you forego or sacrifice is your opportunity cost so why we call it opportunity cost because you had an opportunity to make a cost by selecting it so anything which is sacrificed is opportunity cost so you this thing again uh, support my explanation that basically cost is something which is going out from your hands and similarly you must have heard the word social cost now, what is this cost or maybe something related to external cost so all these costs which you see there's something you are losing from your hand and when we talk about the social cost we were talking about the social uh, benefits or those desired output which we could have but we can't have it since it gives some harmful effects on the people like the pollution or environmental concerns they're going to spoil your health or your living and definitely you have to pay something and something must be going out of your hands so that's why the cost is eventually understood at a basic meaning as that the cost is something which goes out from your hands Okay, so if we are understanding a little bit of this cost today, we are going to find out that what and how the cost is actually defined or distributed in economics. So usually, we have two types of costs. One could be explicit cost and one could be implicit cost. Now, eventually, if we just see into these two words, explicit is something which is open to everyone. Everybody could see that cost. But the implicit cost is sometimes which is not seen. Now, how is it possible? What kind of cost which we cannot see? It's definitely when we don't occur any expense, if we don't take any economic decisions to any particular product or anything, then it means that the cost will remain hidden, but you can still measure it. Like, for example, if we talk about 
the ex external cost. Now you know what is external cost is. It's a cost which is paid by the person standing by. And maybe if we just talk about the opportunity cost, definitely this is the cost which we can also measure, but still we cannot see in real life. Like if I just select what these two products, if I'm choosing this one, that this is my opportunity cost. So this cost is not relevant to anyone, but still in economics, we do highlight this concept of opportunity cost, that this is something which could be an alternative cost for you. So dear students, how and why we are splitting it up? In common terms, this explicit cost is something sometimes known as an accountant's cost. And implicit cost is sometimes also, or maybe explicit could be added, that is an economist's cost. All right? So accountant's cost is something which is actually explicit. Like if you just see that a firm is paying wages bill to its labor, to its worker. So when you're going to pay somewhere, you're going to record it. You're going to like put it in, into some kind of books. So that is explicit. This is something that is open to you, but something which is hidden, which cannot be seen like an opportunity cost. You're not making cost on this, but rather you have foregone it. You have sacrificed it, but still you are taking into account why? Because you need to make some kind of value judgment. You need to decide which one we need to weigh over each other. If somebody is like more important, then you're going to choose them and sacrifice others. So you see students that this is how the economists are eventually dividing the costs implicit or explicit. Implicit is a hidden cost and explicit is an open cost, which could be seen in the books or in some written paper. That's why sometimes the explicit cost is barely known as accountant's cost and implicit cost is known as economist's cost. But here is a question. Do you think that economists are not concerned with the explicit cost? We cannot say that because definitely while we are deciding, we are also concerned with the explicit costs as well. So it means that economy or economics has a greater and wider vision to elaborate and understand about the cost. Okay, so today we are going to be focusing more on the explicit costs, which we are popularly naming in with one word, which we can record in the books. And this cost is usually known as cost of production so here we go dear students the topic eventually starts now it's the cost of production and now you understand that which type of costs are there and we are talking about those talks which we can those costs which we can record and which we can see and the cost of production is over there and we all know that there are the cost of production would be that cost which is eventually bear by or which we have to pay to the factors of production the resources or the inputs of the of the production and whatever the cost we are paying to them is going to be known as the cost of production so this cost of production is eventually further divided into two types we have one which is known as The total variable cost and the other one is known as the total fixed cost. So these are the basic two costs which the firm would eventually have to pay. These are the two basic. Now when we talk about the basic, it means that there might be some other costs as well. 
and what are those other they are not the basic but they are the derived costs now, do you understand the word derived derived is something which can be extracted from these two they can be extracted from these two now if we see that how many extracted cost then we can say that they are almost some of the trends also known as uh, the cost trends but those extracted costs are usually in uh, four usually as per your syllabus they are four uh, but sometimes they are five and the fifth one you definitely learn in your higher grades uh, so we won't put it in this discussion so let's see that how we extract further four out of this so we are ready so considering this if we just add these two we get a third cost of production which is extracted one and that is known as the total cost all right okay so we can further have three more extracted from these three from the total variable cost we can calculate the averages of all so we can consider and extract average variable cost and from the average sorry total fixed cost we can calculate the average fixed cost and last but not the least from total cost we can calculate average total cost or in simply we can say average cost now these are the six trends from where we can be assessed we can explain and understand that how these trends are moving and how we can find out that uh, that how which area of our cost is raising and how we could minimize it so before we go understanding them in further first of all we need to learn what these all uh, are known as and how we extract them so the total variable cost is a cost which is usually known as a cost which increases or change with the level of output the more output is increased the more variable cost is going to increase so it changes with the level of output dear students so it means if the output is decreasing so the variable cost will also decrease so when the change with the output and let's say if the output remains zero then what would be the variable cost it's going to be zero so that's why this type of cost is usually the one which changes with the level of output so we usually name it as variable the variable it means by it's that it's like changing the other one is like fixed cost and the fixed cost is the one which does not change with the output it doesn't change with the output you can't get right mute mute kyun nahi ho raha block line mute kyun and it doesn't change with the level of output so it remains fixed and the other side when we talk about the total cost it's definitely the addition of these two out these two costs and we get the total cost itself over here now what are the total variable costs which we can calculate out of it number 1 the total variable costs which we usually find out are those output for example like wages now we know when the level of output is increasing the wages are also increasing in this way 
So the more the wages you are paying, the more cost will increase. If you are not paying the wages, if you're not hiring the labor, so that means that the wages are not paid, so the variable cost will not change. Let's put some more examples over here, like utilities. Now, what are utilities? Utilities are something like paying for your daily or running the business. Like you're paying the electricity bill, you're paying for the telephone bill, all these utilities can be considered as variable. The more you use the telephone, the more you are using the or consuming the electricity, it's going to increase the variable cost. Now talking about the fixed cost, what type of costs are these? What are the various examples for it? So putting the examples over here, those expenditures which remain fixed, those costs which remain fixed, even you're producing or you're not. For example, if I just take example of the rents of the building. Now we know that even our production sector is closed, even the we are not producing at the moment, if the factories or the firms, they are closed for some time, but still the rent has to be paid. So whatever we are paying this, that is considered to be the total fixed cost. All right. So shall we have some more examples over here? Let's put the salaries on this list. Okay, now why I'm putting salaries over here? This is something very important to know. What is the difference between wages and salaries? Salaries and wages, both are something which we can say, the salaries are to the permanent staff and the wages are for the temporary staff. Now who are the permanent staff and who are the temporary staff? Very much clear to us. The temporary staff is somebody who you're asking to work for some time on, a, let's say, a kind of contract. Like you may work for like eight hours, you may work for like one week, and then after that you're off. So it means that the temporary staff or workers in your organizations who are paid on daily basis or maybe on the per hour wages, per hour basis, that means that these wages are for those which are changing. But the salaries are something which are paid to those people, even the working is not going on, like an accountant in your office, like a manager in your office, they are paid salaries rather than wages. So the salaries are for the permanent staff. So if the work is not going on, if the production is not taking place, still you are paying the salaries. So this type of salaries are usually known as total fixed cost over here. Okay, some other example like insurance premium. The insurance premium is eventually known as some installments which you are paying uh, for your building and premises, or maybe for your stock. And that premium you have to pay even you are producing or not. Maybe you are paying some interest on the loan so interest is something which you're paying on the fixed basis. So these are eventually in a flow and they are not affected even with the change in the production. So what happens? Even you're producing more, even the firm is growing and it's increasing its profits, but it doesn't impact on this. They remain the same. So adding up these two dear students, we get the total cost and now, when we come to these extracted, we are going to find out that which average variable cost and how we can extract average fixed cost and how we can extract average cost. For that, if you just take example of average variable cost, it's very simple to know that, that whenever we divide the output with the total variable cost, total variable cost. So this is the total variable cost where we divide any total variable cost with the level of or number of output that gives you the average variable cost. Same goes with the average fixed cost. So if we just divide average total cost, total, sorry, fixed cost with the level of output, this would give you average fixed cost. And we just find out average cost over here. So 
if we just add these two, we can get this average cost or otherwise you can calculate by adding or dividing total cost with the output. So by this way, you can get average cost. Okay, so this was a little introduction about the costs and now we are going to move on to its what well, some of the trends that how we need to know, to understand and learn it further in the shape of its table, schedules or its graph. So let's find out how we could draw all these graphs together. Some of the values which I have just extracted for you, like let's suppose if we just take output over here. And let's suppose this is your total variable cost. I'm just abbreviating this total variable cost like TVC. If we just put total fixed cost on this column, and we are going to put this total cost curve on this column. And then the extracted values and averages of average variable co cost of this column and average fixed cost and the average cost in this. So here is something which we have a complete picture of all the cost trends over here. So let's suppose if we just start the output from 0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's find out some of the values over here. So let's recall all the formulas. We got like total variable cost plus total fixed cost is equal to total cost. Total variable cost stands for like TVC. TFC stands for total fixed cost and TC stands for total cost of the firm. And then we can find our average variable cost plus average fixed cost and the average cost. And how we can extract average variable cost by dividing TBC over Q. This is your ABC. This is average fixed cost, which can be extracted by dividing total fixed cost with Q. Now the Q is output. I'm assuming that the output should be assumed as Q over here. And average cost is your total cost divided by Q. Now, if I just take is assume that if at the output zero, what would be the total variable cost? Since it was told that if the output changes, the variable cost also change. If it doesn't change, if it remains zero, the total variable cost has to be zero. So this should be kept in your mind that the total variable cost will remain zero at the output zero. So we now assume further that what values which we could take over here. So let's suppose if we take that at one unit, if we produce at the level of output one, when the output is produced one, one unit is produced, and we assume that the total variable cost, all those variable which costs which are changing, if we just put them together, then we get 20 units of, of cost producing one output. If let's suppose if it's two, we assume it is 30. And let's suppose if we produce three, a, let's say it's going to be 35. So you see that the variable cost is increasing as the level of output is increasing. What about the total fixed cost now? The total fixed cost is something which we pay even we don't pr produce. So can we say that the total cost is going to be zero? No, we cannot say like that. If the output is zero, we have to pay something out of it. So let's suppose that the total fixed cost is 100. We are assuming it. We suppose that it is 100. At unit one, what it should be? It's going to remain 100. Like if you're producing more unit, doesn't mean that your rent amount is going to increase. It's going to remain the same. It's going to remain fixed. So total fixed cost is going to remain same. At the unit two, it's going to be 100 and then 
hundred on word. Now, how to find and calculate total cost? It's very simple. By adding these two, this is what we have done in this equation. If you just see into this equation, it shows total variable cost, total fixed cost added, giving us total cost together. So adding these two values give us 100 over here, 120 on this side. It's going to be 130, adding 130, of course. And by adding 35, total variable cost with 100 total fixed cost, we get 135. Now, the last three columns are eventually can be calculated by using all these three formulas, one, two, and three. So let's say one and two, and this is formula three. So it means if we want to calculate at zero, that at zero output, what could be the average variable cost? So we are going to find out that at zero, what was the total variable cost? That is zero. So zero divided by zero, we will make it zero so far. It will start from the zero. Now, considering this example, average fixed cost, we have total fixed cost. And if we divide it with the output zero, we got no answer. Dividing 100 with zero is going to be either, either math error or it's going to be nothing. So we are just putting a bar over here. Again, total cost, same. So we are moving to the one. Now, when, when we want to find out the average variable cost at unit one, so it means that this is total variable cost and at unit one, it's divide, it has to divide 20. That is the total variable cost. So dividing this 20 with one will give us the first average variable cost that is 20. Okay, now what about this uh, total fixed cost? This total fixed cost, when we are going to divide it, it's going to be 100 divided by one. This is going to be one. And then we have total cost is going to be 120. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Moving on to with two. So dividing this variable cost with two, it's going to be 15, right? And now if you want to calculate average fixed cost, we are going to pick up this 100 to divide with two. So it's going to fall 50. So answer is getting 50. And when dividing this 130 total cost with two, it's going to give us 65. The last but not the least, I hope you can try it together. We can try it together. So 35 divided by three units, it's going to be something like 11.7. This is going to be 33. How did we get this 33? Divided this average fixed total cost, total fixed cost with the unit three, we get 33 point something. And the last is 135 total cost. If we divide it with three, we get the answer 45. So what are we finding over here that in this whole table, we find something that the, these are the total values. Have you noticed this students? These are the total values. Now these total values are eventually showing that they are increasing as more output is increasing. Whereas the average is something which is eventually falling. Now, why is it this so? This is something mathematical, which we can see in it. The total is something which is adding up. The average is showing it's the performance of or the outcome of each unit. So when we are talking about the each unit, it's going to show us the exact picture that what was the eventual outcome of that production of unit. So this is something adding up. So if we are producing one unit, they're giving this much cost. If we are adding second, they are adding this much and this much. So the averages are eventually falling and they are increasing. All right, so that's it for today. I'll be sharing a worksheet for you. 
and I hope that if you solve it, you can have a better idea and we can discuss in our next class and you will find out that why uh, the trends are something like that. Thank you very much for uh, today and uh, hopefully to see you tomorrow with the continued lesson of this. Allah peace.